Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad within it. Welcome to Bethel AME Church, Bloomfield, Connecticut, the land of unlimited love. And on this Sunday morning, we have come this far by faith to magnify the Lord, to lift up the name of Jesus. And I don't know about you, but you need to forget about yourself for just a little while. Let's concentrate on Jesus and let's magnify his name. He he woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. The blood is running warm in your veins. You know your name. You have the activity of your limbs. Uh, you're in the land of the living. You ought to give him some praise. You ought to show the Lord some sign. Uh, you ought to put your hands together and say, thank you, Lord, for another day. Thank you, God, for waking me up. Thank you, God, for my house, my health, my home, my family. Thank you, God, for making a way out of no way. Thank you, God, for being God all by yourself and you ought to magnify his name. David said enter into his court with thanksgiving and enter his gates with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever and his truth endures forever and ever and ever. So let's praise him. Let's bless him and let's magnify him. Come on enter in to the sanctuary. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. my brothers and sisters at home or even in this sanctuary we need you to like and share on your Facebook page let someone know that you have entered in to the sanctuary to praise his name that you are worshiping God this morning let someone know that you're worshiping with Bethel Church in Bloomfield Connecticut the land of unlimited love we'd like to know where you are worshiping uh, God where you are and that you're worshiping God with us now my brothers and sisters as we are praising God, the praise team is going to bless us now with our opening selection. So you've got to get up from your, that seat. Let's get the blood mo moving. Let's give God the praise and let's magnify him. He's worthy to be praised. Is God worthy? I know he's worthy to be praised. Come on, praise team. Let's bless God today.
Hallelujah. Praise be to our God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Promise. God has promised to open up the floodgate of heaven and pour us out a blessing. All we have to do is be able and ready to receive what thus saith the Lord, what God has for us. And now we enter into an attitude and an atmosphere of praise and prayer. Uh, amen. Uh, there are so many things that we need to pray for. There are so many situations that need the healing touch of God. And he promised to bless us. To bless our going out and our coming in. And so uh, right now where you are, just begin to thank God for uh, your blessings. Begin to ask the Lord to touch you. Just begin to ask him to bless your family, your children, your grandchildren. To cover with the blood of Jesus. To, to just cover us with the blood of Jesus. Covering a protection. A covering us to give us the grace and the mercy that to, to touch us. So, you know grace and mercy fits us this morning. That he, he blesses us even when we don't deserve to be blessed. He blesses us in spite of uh, the mess and the mistakes that we make. He he blesses us over and over again. And then not only does he bless us, he heals us. He gives us the strength to run on a little while longer. He heals our bodies. He heals uh, our minds. He heals our diseases. He heals us. He blesses us. He heals us. And then he makes a way out of no way. I don't know about you, but there's a witness that knows what God can do. Uh, that he's done it before. He can do it again. If he healed me before, he can heal me again. Uh, if he raised me before, he can raise me again. If he touched me before, he can touch me again. I don't know about you, but I know that God is in the blessing business. Hallelujah. I've watched him do it. I've watched him. I've watched him. I have watched him, and I felt the power of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so as you are in the, uh, the, the, the sanctuary now, let's go to the altar in prayer. Amen. You can because where you're sitting now is your altar. And so, uh, as you put your blessed hands together and begin to ask God for mercy and grace and to healing for healing power, just know that He's blessing you right now. Reverend Giddens is going to come now and pray for us and with us and asking God to bless this service, but even more asking God to bless His people. We lift up this morning uh, Sister Dee Crawford who came through surgery and she's watching us right now in Boston. Uh, she's watching us in the intensive care unit, but Sister D is said she's going to watch her family put her on this morning, and she's watching right now. So Sister D, we call in your name. We see you. We're praying for you right now in the name of Jesus. The surgery was a success, but now we're believing God for your restoration in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. We lift up Mother Mary Johnson, who's asking for prayers this morning. We ask Ask God to touch Mother Mary from the crown of her head to the very sole of her feet. And whatever she's standing in need of, God, work it out for her in the name of Jesus. We lift up Brother Robert Horn this morning in the name of Jesus. Believing God for healing power, restoration in Jesus' name. There's situations that need healing, situations that need power and deliverance. We ask God uh, to bless even now in Jesus' name. And so, uh, Reverend Gideon won't you pray in Jesus name amen good morning God Psalm 103 simply says bless the Lord oh my soul with all that's within me bless the Lord oh my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgiveth all thine inequities who healeth all thy diseases. So Father, we come before you this morning, Lord, looking for that blessing, God. Father, we ask that you first bless this service, Lord. Enter in. Let your Holy Spirit move amongst your people. Move from the pulpit to the door, oh God, so that we might feel your holy power. Father, we stand in need of many things, but Lord, we know that you control all things. So we stand faithfully this morning on your word, Lord. Your word simply says, ask in Jesus' name. So Father, we're asking in Jesus' name this morning that you bless the service. 
We ask that you send a blessing upon the choir, Lord, the praise team. Anoint their voices, oh God, so that they might sing to the power and glory till the Lord come down. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to just to be in the service. We thank you because you woke us up this morning, started us on our way. You forgave all our inequities, Lord, and allowed us to come into your presence. So, Father, we say hallelujah and amen to your name. Father, we ask that you bless the sick, those who are infirm, those who are standing in need of emotional support, Lord. We ask that you just move as only you can move. And Father, if you do that, God, we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise in Jesus' name. My God, we just want to thank you. So many things, too much to name, but you know our hearts, Lord. You see us as we are. Father, we are damaged goods, but you are the fixer, the heart regulator, the mind controller. So, Father, we stand in awe of you. And this morning, we say thank you again. If we had a thousand tongues, we could not thank you enough. So bless the preacher. Bless the preached word. Bless each and every one in the service, whether it be virtual or in person. We don't know exactly, Lord, what you have in store for us, but we know you brought us through a week that had some ups and some downs. But yet and still, you remain faithful, Lord. So we ask that you build our faith in you. More trust into you, O oh God. And we will bless the Lord, O oh my soul, with all that is within us. Now, Father God, as we end this prayer, we want you to understand, God, that we are your children. We bow humbly at your feet. There's nothing we can bring, Lord, but our own souls and ourselves. So we present ourselves prostrate in front of you, oh God. Save us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Hallelujah.
to do great things and will always do great things hallelujah you want to bless the lord hallelujah to bless him to make him larger to lift him up to edify to glorify to magnify him bless the lord oh my soul and all that's within me bless his holy name amen we lift up Brother General Smith in prayer also this morning. He's come through surgery. He had surgery and is doing well. Amen. We prayed with him and uh, Sister Pat, and they are doing well in Jesus' name. But we certainly lift him up in prayer, asking for the healing power of the Lord. Amen. And you know, God is doing something new. And in this season of COVID, and we're coming out of it, but in this season of COVID, uh, we are blessed this Sunday morning to have a family reunion. Amen. A family reunion, but it is a virtual family reunion. And so uh, we praise God that the Davis Thomas family, uh, Sister Annie Roberts, amen, is celebrating their family reunion and they are joining us virtually in their own homes, but they are with us worshiping virtually. Isn't that wonderful? So we praise God for our media ministry that you are providing the atmosphere for the family to gather and have family family reunion. They're in worship with us right now. Can't you see them? They're sitting in that section right there. Can you see them? They're wearing their family t-shirts. Can you see them? They are gathered together. The family has come to Bethel Church for their family reunion. Amen. Virtually, that is a blessing. And some other families ought to do the same thing. Amen. Praise God. You can have a family reunion in your own home and be safe and have a good time in the name of the Lord. So Sister Annie, thank you for inviting your family to join us this morning in worship. We love you and God bless you in the name of Jesus. Now we want to remind everyone that this coming Saturday is our, or Friday and uh, Saturday is our uh, uh, First Episcopal District uh, Christian Education Congress, amen, and it is virtual, and so we were going to be tuning in and meeting our new bishop, uh, Bishop Julius McAllister and Mother Joan McAllister, and we wish our supervisor a happy, blessed birthday. Her birthday was this week, amen, and she's coming to the First Episcopal District, and so uh, we are wel welcoming them and uh, joining the introductions on this weekend with the uh, Department of Christian Education for our district. And so we could tune on in, uh, and uh, the registrations have been set, but I'm sure there is still plenty good room in the Master's Kingdom. And so if you want to be a part of that, you can let us know. We'll give you the information of how to get in for that uh, event on this coming weekend, our first Episcopal District Christian Education Youth Congress. Amen. Also, uh, we want to praise God on yesterday. Uh, Auntie Val, our Director of Christian Education and Evangelist Ashonda, uh, had a wonderful Christian Education Day here at the church. Praise be to God. We want to thank you for your efforts, the helping hands that helped. And and we were so blessed to see the young people. We had so young, many young people in the house of the Lord. Uh, they had a wonderful, wonderful Christian education project. And uh, we learned about the Good Samaritan. Are you your brother's keeper? Are you your sister's keeper? And are you the hands of God? Are you the hands of God? Uh, sister Eginetta Miller came and did a beautiful art project. Uh, uh, 
explaining to us that we are the hands of God. And if you could see the art crafts where the young people traced their hands and made uh, an activity showing us they are the hands of God. We have to remember that we are God's hands. So as we bless somebody, God is using us to be a blessing. It's not preaching time, but that's, you know, that's part of the sermon. So listen to that later on. We want to praise God for our young people and what they are doing. Even in the summer months, God is blessing them. Amen. And some of our young people that were here are now here. And so we looking up at them and they're looking down at us, but we praise God because God is blessing blessing our children in a mighty, mighty way. Amen. Amen. So thank you to our Department of Christian Education and pushing forward and having this day. And we had social distance, but we had a good time with the young people. And it was a great time in the Lord. Amen. Look for more activities that are coming forward in the name of Jesus. We want to remind everyone of giving opportunities that you can give through GiveLify. Look for the picture of the church, Bethel AME Church, Bloomfield, Connecticut. The outside of our church building, the edifice is there. Beautiful white brick building. Give to Bethel Church, Bethel AME Church in Bloomfield, Connecticut. We thank you for your gifts and giving there. Also through PayPal is another online way of giving. And you can give again to Bethel AME Church to Bloomfield, Connecticut. Amen. Look for the picture of the church. You can give there. You can drop your offerings off. We're here until 11 a.m. The finance ministry will meet you at the door and will come out to your car and pick up your offering envelope. Or you can drop it off for those who are in the building at the finance room door. There are two baskets there. Please make sure you write legibly on your offering envelopes and you can place your gifts in the basket at the finance room door. Certainly you can uh, make Mail it in, snail mail. We receive all gifts that go unto the church, however you choose to give them. But we thank you in advance. We know during the summer, people do all kinds of things, and sometimes offerings go down during the summertime. But let's show God how faithful we are, because he has been faithful to us all year long. So let's honor God with our giving, and we thank you in advance for your tithes and your offerings. Let's pause now and bless the offering. Whatever you're giving, let's bless it now. We give thee but thine own, whatever the gift may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Bless it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now come on, praise team. Let's go a little higher in the Lord. Amen.
revive your people, oh Lord. We need to just revive your people, oh Lord.
hallelujah is he all right i don't know about you but he is all right jesus is just all right with me amen i tried him and i found out that he is all right with me tried him for myself and i realized that he is all right with me let us pray consecrate me now to thy service lord by thy power of grace divine let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine speak to us and through us now god we pray in the mighty name of jesus amen amen and amen i draw your attention to the gospel according to mark the sixth chapter and the 30th verse mark the sixth chapter and the 30th verse amen he's all right he's just saying the lord is good amen it's all right with him amen mark the sixth chapter and the 30th verse the apostle gathered around jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught then because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat he said to them come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest so they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place but many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of jesus and the disciples when jesus landed he saw a large crowd he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd so he began teaching many of them many things by this time it was late in the day so his disciples came to him this is a remote place they said and it's already very late send the people away so that they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat but Jesus answered you give them something to eat they said to him that would take more than a half year's wages are we to go and spend that much on bread and give it to them to eat how many loaves do you have jesus asked go and see when they found out they said five and two fish mm. then jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass so they sat down in groups of hundreds and fifties taking the five loaves and two fish and looking up to heaven he gave thanks and broke the loaves then gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people he also divided the two fish among them all they all ate and were satisfied and his disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces of bread and fish the number of men who had eaten was 5,000 for a few moments let us focus ourselves on this subject you can't beat God giving you can't beat God giving. We find this morning this story of Jesus feeding 5,000, and this story is found uh, meshed in between two biblical stories. 
We, we find the story of Jesus feeding the 5,000 first between the story of Jesus and his apostles going away to a deserted place. And uh, we see now that uh, the, 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 the people are following after Jesus. Jesus had just uh, sent out the disciples and they were returning, telling Jesus about all of the healing that they had done. They were celebrating the, the miracles that, and the ministry that was in process. And Jesus sees the crowds had gathered around them. The crowds had come because they wanted to see a man that could do all of these miraculous things. And so the crowds were pressing Jesus. And now uh, it has become very late in the evening. Jesus saw that the crowds were pressing them so much that he asked the disciples, tells them, let's go to a solitary place. Let's go get away from the crowd because uh, these crowds want to pull from me and pull from us. So let's leave them and go to a solitary place where we can get some rest. Have you ever felt like you have been pressed all week long? Have you ever felt like you've been pressed on every side? That someone was pulling you from every direction, pulling you, wanting something from you, and you got weary in your body, weary in your mind, weary in your spirit. All you wanted to do was go home, lay in your bed, close the door, turn on Netflix, veg out. Have you a chill and Netflix evening? Just you, yourself, and I. You don't want to look at anybody, don't want to talk to anybody, don't want to do anything, don't want to go anywhere, don't want to do anything. You just want to be by yourself uh, where you can sit there with your remote uh, uh, in your hand, uh, your beverage of choice on the side, uh, your bag of chips, uh, and you can have a good time. Just you, yourself and I. The work week has been too long. The, uh, you've had to deal with too much stress. Uh, you have had to deal with too many issues. Uh, you've heard too much mess. You've dealt with too many problems. You've paid too many bills. You've solved too many problems. You've listened to too many telephone calls. You've dealt with too many situations. Uh, you worked out too much stuff. All you want is to go to a solitary place uh, and rest. Jesus tells the disciples, let's go to a solitary place because the crowd is pressing us. Jesus and the disciples get in a boat and they go to, to, to the other side. You, you got to understand, uh, they go on the Sea of Galilee. But uh, you must recognize, uh, uh, Reverend Judy would preach this, she would tell you that the Sea of Galilee is only seven miles long. And so uh, they can see from one side of the Sea of Galilee to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And so when Jesus got in the boat and they started sailing across the Sea of Galilee, the people saw Jesus and where they were going, and they knew it was just seven miles, so they started running, and they were running. They outran the boat going around to the other side, and so when Jesus landed in the solitary place, uh, the folk were right there. It, it, they they outran the book. It, it's like, you know, uh, you say, I'm going to go home. I'm vegging out. I'm going to chill. I, I can see. I, I can see my bed is calling my name. And when you get to the house, the kids are right there in your face. When you get there, the dog wants to be walked. When you get there, the family's asking, what are we having for dinner? When you get there, somebody's calling your phone. You get there, you're ready to rest. And somebody said, can we go for a ride? You get there, and they've outrun you to your resting place. And you are like, ah! All I wanted to do is lay down and rest. They outran Jesus to the solitary place. But the word says that Jesus, being Jesus, had compassion on them. 
I can see the disciples, uh, they would be frustrated. These 12, they're frustrated because they've been ministering to these people. They're saying, and here they are again. They keep showing up, ringing our doorbell again. We came to rest. We don't come to minister. We want to just veg out for a minute. We need just a minute of rest and relaxation. We don't want to deal with anybody but Jesus. Somebody say, but Jesus. Jesus has compassion on them and starts to minister to them because the text says he looked at the people and said they are like a sh they are like sheep without a shepherd and they need to be ministered to. So Jesus starts teaching and preaching. He starts ministering to the people. He's ministering to them while they are pushing around him. And you got to understand, beloved, that they are pushing close to Jesus. They, they are, uh, he's ministering. He's still pouring out. He's still tired, but he's still giving. Uh, he is exhausted, but he's still ministering to them. He, he wants to go lay down but he's still laying hands on the sick still uh, doing miracle after miracle still blessing the folk and the disciples uh, are watching Jesus ministering uh, even in his state of being weary and exhausted and the disciples uh, have a conversation with each other and they say it's getting late we need to tell Jesus to send these folk home and so they go up to Jesus. They say, Jesus, it's late in the evening. It's in the text. It's, it's late in the evening. It's getting late. You need to send them home so that they could get something to eat. Thinking that it, it would move the crowd. That they could now veg out. That they could now relax. That they could now breathe that they wouldn't have to deal with people and people's issues. But Jesus, being Jesus, said, you feed them. <laughs> See, they were hungry and they wanted to get something to eat. And they said, Jesus, they gotta be hungry. So, send them away so they can get something to eat. And Jesus says, you feed them. It's desolate. There's nothing there. There are no towns around. The hour is late. The disciples say, send them away so that they can get something to eat. And Jesus responds to them, you feed them. My God, that's point number one. You feed them. My God, we must understand that it is our responsibility to be the hands of God to those who are in need. We also recognize that we all get to a place where we need some rest and we need to re uh, plug in and refuel ourselves from the busy journey but as we are doing the work of God and as we are refueling and resting let us also remember that we have a responsibility to be the body of Christ we cannot be so consumed with our own selves that we do not see people who are in need we must see people for where they are and we must pause to be a blessing to somebody that that is less fortunate than we are. We can be the hands of God. We don't know what someone might need. They, that little piece of bread that you give them might be the very sustenance that they need to give them strength to run on a little while longer. You don't know. You may be ministering to an angel unaware. You must recognize that God is using us to be the hands 
hands of God. Jesus tells the disciples, you feed them. Don't be so concerned with your own physical situation because there are some folk that are worse off than we ever could be. We think that we have some problems. There are some people that are far worse off than we ever could imagine. We complain that it's hot, but there are some people that don't even have a house to live in. We complain that we don't want to eat certain things, but there are some people that have nothing to eat at all. We complain that our feet hurt, but there are some people that don't even have feet. They have been amputated off. We need to learn to be grateful for the blessings that God has given us and learn how to feed somebody. We need to learn to feed somebody. Feed them some love. Feed them some joy. Feed them some understanding. Feed them. Feed them till they want no more. Feed, feed them. Feed them. Feed them. Feed them. My grandmother, my grandmother, my grandmother, my grandmother, my grandmother was poor. We came up the rough side of the mountain. But one thing about grandmama's house, you always had something to eat. She made sure that anybody that was in that house had food to eat. And whatever she had, she would feed you. She'd feed you. She'd put a chicken in a pot and make stewed chicken and spread it out that 20 people could eat off of one pot of stewed chicken chicken add a little rice in it put some cornbread on the side put some greens on a pot and spread it out you gotta feed them feed them the disciples uh, when Jesus said you feed them the disciples got messed up because they said that would be too much See, some of us, we already trying to calculate how much something's going to cost, whether we can afford it. That's not in my budget. Uh, it's not in our budget, but I'm going to Macy's after this. Not in my budget, but I live in TJ Maxx. Not in my budget, but I shop online all night long. Not in my budget, but I sit on the TV home shopping network and click, 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 click. Not in my budget. Uh, that's a sermon for another time. But uh, the disciples, the disciples, the disciples uh, are sitting there and they are, uh, are talking to Jesus. They said, uh, how can it be? That would be more than a half year's wages. Do you see that crowd, Jesus? You see them out there? Uh, we can't feed all of those folk. How are we going to feed all of those people? Uh, Jesus turns around and asks them, uh, how many loaves? do you have? Point number two, how many loaves do you have? You and I must assess what we do have. Before uh, we do the ministry, we got to assess what do we have? Uh, somebody's already clicking in their mind. They're saying, what are my skill set? What do I have in my hand that can be used for the ministry of God? Uh, what do I have in my church that can be used for the ministry of God? We don't have to go outside of our walls for anything. We we have everything we need. We have caterers. We have uh, uh, landscapers. We have uh, uh, child care givers. We have a technology team. We have preachers. We don't have to go outside and get somebody to pray for us. We don't have to call T.D. Jakes. We call Pastor G. We don't have to call Soretta Jake. We call Jennifer G. We just do uh, we use the gifts that are in the house house. Do you know the gifts? Look in your own pocketbook and see what you got up in there. Don't you realize you carrying stuff around and don't even realize what's in your bag? Somebody will get that on the way home. When you get in the car, you don't know what's in that bag. And you say, why is my bag so heavy? And then you look inside of it and you say, oh, I got three bottles of water in my bag. Oh, I forgot I put this in my bag. Oh, I forgot I put that extra makeup purse in this bag. Oh, I forgot I put extra stockings in this bag. Oh, I forgot I put the battery charger in this bag. Oh. I forgot I put these shoes in this bag. Oh, I forgot I put this bottle of perfume in this bag. Oh, I forgot I put this sandwich in the bag. Every 
everything, everything you need is in the bag. And you've been carrying it around all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've been coming to Bethel all these years and didn't realize we had all these skills in this church. You've been sitting on that pew all these years and didn't realize we had all these skills in this church. You've been coming all this time. Didn't know this praise team was in this house. You've been coming all this time. Didn't know Reverend Walker was sitting at the door. You've been coming all this time. Didn't know Reverend David was feeding the hungry you've been coming all this time didn't know reverend james and sister sandra were doing a prayer ministry you've been coming all this time and didn't know the stewardess of visiting each other you've been coming all this time and didn't know the men's ministry is in operation you didn't know the auntie val was blessing the babies how didn't you know because you didn't look in your bag Jesus says how many loaves do you have you have to assess what you do have before you complain about what you don't have we complain so much about what we can't do and what we don't have to do and that we can't do something with a preconceived idea in our head because we don't look in our bag. Jesus said, how many loaves do you have? And they said, we only have five loaves and we got two fish. Just five loaves and two fish. I mean, we didn't have anything to begin with. We saw a little boy walking through, and he had a, 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 a bag from Popeye's, and he had two pieces of fish in there and five biscuits. That's all he had in the bag, and we grabbed it from him. And so, uh, uh, Pastor Jesus, all we have is five rolls and two pieces of fried fish. One's a whiting and one's a porgy. We, uh, we, 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 we don't have a whole lot, Jesus. We got five biscuits from, uh, they look like they're cheddar biscuits from, uh, from uh, uh, Red Lobster, but we're not sure. Five loaves and two fish. Jesus said, sit the people down and have a communal meal. Jewish custom is to have a communal meal, the people must sit in order. And the order would be in groups of hundreds and fifties. They would sit in orders and the orders would be called tables. And so they would serve the people from the first table to the last table. And some of my preachers in here understand, and Stuart S. understands, Sister Betty and Sister Duchess, that when the table is open on first Sunday and we go into the service of Holy Communion, every time the people come to the altar and fill the altar, it's called a table. And when the people kneel at the altar, they are sitting at the table. And so uh, you can count from one side of that altar to the other side of the altar, and you can count how many people can fit across the table. I believe we can fit about 30 people across our table here in different have different sizes of their altar to become a table and and if you don't make it into Bethel to receive your communion but you're in the parking lot to receive your communion when we take it together that all becomes one table hallelujah and if you are at home that's another table if it's you and your boo you and your babies you and your spouse
Ghost, uh, you by yourself taking that communion, uh, you are taking it as a table. And uh, recognizing that when you eat at this table, uh, you will have enough food to fill you up. Oh, yeah, Jesus. Uh, you have to see uh, that Jesus tells them uh, to sit them down in tables of 150s and then Jesus does something. See I was just talking about communion a communal meal but you have to also see Brother Pedro what he's doing. Jesus then does something special. He takes the bread and he blesses it. Then he breaks it and then he gives it. You ought to write that down in your notes. Uh, that if you're going to do work for the Lord, you've got to do it that way. The first thing you've got to do is you've got to bless it. Then you've got to break it. And then you've got to give it. Jesus blesses the bread. He breaks the bread. And then he gives the bread. And the word says that he does it with the fish as well. He gives it then to the disciples to give it out to the people. And when we come to the altar on first Sunday, the pastor first First thing that he does or she does uh, is uh, they bless the bread uh, then they break uh, the bread uh, and then they give it to uh, uh, the other disciples uh, the other ministers uh, to give to the people uh, and that's point number three uh, that you can't beat God giving uh, hallelujah you see uh, we need to recognize uh, that when the miracle happens uh, the miracle was not in Jesus hand but rather the miracle is in the disciples hands because Jesus does not do the miracle he blesses the bread he breaks the bread and then he gives the bread but it is the disciples that go down that table and start passing out that bread the disciples take the loaf and take that fish and the disciples uh, give a little bit to this one uh, and a little bit to that one uh, and a little bit to that one. Uh, the miracle uh, is in the disciples' hands uh, and you got to realize uh, there's a blessing uh, in your hands. Uh, there's a miracle uh, in your hands uh, and God wants you uh, to be the hands of God uh, and you uh, can't beat uh, God giving uh, no matter how you try the more you give the more the more he gives to you so just keep on giving and giving and giving and giving because it's really true that you can't be God giving no matter no matter no matter how you try miracle in you he's using you to bless somebody else and you can't beat God giving no matter how you try he uses you to bless somebody else and then he uses them to bless somebody else the miracle is in your hands the doors of the church are open there might be someone in the house of the Lord this morning who wants that miracle in your hands. I invite you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. I invite you to say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart right now. I am sorry, Lord, for the sin that I have done. Use me for your glory. Fill me with the precious Holy Ghost. And I give myself to you today. That's it, beloved. All you got to do is give your life to Jesus. Give yourself. 
And when you give yourself, he does just that. He'll bless you. Oh yes, he'll break you. But then he'll give you to be a blessing to somebody else. The reason why some of us have gone through some stuff is because we're in the breaking process. But he will bless you in the process. Don't you know he didn't leave you out there by yourself? You didn't lose your mind. Some folk are at the IOL right now because they lost it. They, they couldn't deal with the pressures of the world. I met a nine-year-old girl this week who was in the hospital. The family called me and asked me to pray with them. Nine-year-old little girl who had a complete mental breakdown. The pressures of the world. Nine years old, she couldn't deal with it. But look at you. You've been through this and that. You've had problems. Some of us have lost houses and cars and lost marriages and lost friends and dealt with cancer and dealt with heart issues, but you're here. You can't beat God giving, no matter how you try. Secondly, beloved, I gotta move on, but secondly, beloved, you ought to have a church home. Why not join this land of unlimited love? Become a citizen here, come be a part of the kingdom. We've got plenty good room for you. There's room for you in our Father's kingdom. All you gotta do in the chat, just place, I wanna join Bethel Church. That's all that it takes. Or you can see me after service if you're here or any one of these blessed preachers and let them know I'm joining the church today. We'll fill out a membership card. It's not an application because you don't need an application to join the church. All you need to do is fill out the information card and we will welcome you into our Father's kingdom. Third, you may be in need of special prayer. So as we lift up Sister D. Crawford, and as we lift up Mother Mary Johnson, and as we lift up Brother General Smith, if there are others who are standing in need of prayer, Brother Robert Horn, if there are others, we'll pray with you. The prayers of the righteous avail much. And so if that's you, just put that in the chat. I need special prayer and we'll be praying with you. If you need prayer and are in the house, let us know. We'll put our mask and gloves on. We'll anoint you with oil and we'll believe by faith for your healing. Hallelujah. COVID-19 doesn't stop prayer and it certainly doesn't stop healing. We sing this song usually at offering time because we're giving money to the church and to the Lord but now I want you to think about this song in a different way I want you to think about you giving yourself giving yourself to serve others giving a piece of you to be a blessing to somebody else and yeah, it may be a few dollars, it may be a tithe, it, it may be financial, but it ought to also be physical, it ought to be spiritual. We ought to do something to be a blessing to somebody else. And so as we get ready to leave for just a few minutes, Brother Ty, bring it on up. Brother Ty, bring it on up. Brother Lawrence, bring it on up. Come on, Cam, bring it on up. And let's sing this, we're gonna sing a little bit. I know you got a mask on, but praise team, won't you help me sing this song? You try oh.
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, rest, rule, and abide with you, now henceforth and forevermore. And all God's people sang, Amen. Take us on home. 